You're listening to Radio DMG. And welcome back to Radio DMG. I am your host, Philip Wesley, the Mile High Mouth. And well, uh, today, just a really quick, short episode. We had the first of um, well, an hour-long episode of Holding the Bridge, and we'll have more of that. And we'll also have more musical rations and more of these. And another thing I've been working on, actually, which uh, you'll probably see next month or sometimes soon, I don't know. We have a lot of stuff to go through. Anyways, today's episode, it's our interview that we did with Carrie Kiernan at um, Nondescon 2015. Pretty good stuff. I don't really have too, too much to say about any news or whatnot. Oh, today is the 23rd of September, which is the birthday for Nintendo. I mean, back in 1889, September 23rd, this company was born, and uh, we love them. And thank you, Nintendo, for being alive and uh, being over 100 plus years old. Yeah, old. So uh, congratulations to Nintendo, everybody. Woo! Yay, Nintendo. Anyways, um, let's get back to um, Radio DMG. So here's what we're going to do today. We have the interview with Gary Kiernan, and that's it. That's all I'm going to give you today. So I can just keep you in suspense. So you can be like, oh, I I need a... I need more episodes of Radio DMG. And I'll be like, no, you can't have those. And you'll be like, oh, no. And I'm like, yes, definitely. No new episodes of Radio DMG for you. Of course, you could be at that point and be like, unacceptable. Or something like that. But, uh, wow, I'm really bad at voices. So, uh, sorry about that. You just have to put up with it. In fact, you don't have to put up for it with it for too long because we're actually going to present you with an interview by a real voice actor and a pretty cool one at that. She was in, um, she's the narrator in um, Lord of Magna, Made in Heaven. In fact, a bunch of the people at Nondesk on 2015 this year were um, um, alumni or, or whatever from uh, uh, Lord of Magna, Made in Heaven. A bunch of people went to it that was like, oh, I, I like these people and I like these other people. So, um, ba, 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 ba. oh, um, I do want to mention a few things. Um, there was some release dates announced for, um, well, there's this new convention coming up next year called, uh, um, Anime Southwest, right? And they announced their, um, let's see, Anime South, up oh, there it is. Okay, let me bring this up real quick. Uh, it is a, um... There, there's a few new things next year. There's Dink, and then there's Colorado Anime Fest and Anime Southwest. Um, they announced that it's going to be at the Radisson, which I'm pretty hyped about that because uh, the Radisson is like 10 minutes away from where I live. And that is April 29th, 2016 to May 1st, 2016. And that's pretty cool. There's also Colorado Anime Fest, which um, is at the Renaissance Denver Hotel. And that's February 12th and fe- through 14th. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Some of these um, people going to these are are unique. Um, ha, ha. There's uh, um, Casa is going to be at uh, Anime Southwest. And uh, Kieran Strange is going to be at um, Colorado Anime Fest. And I'm, I think, I think that's what the schedule is currently. So we don't know. But, yeah, I think so. And as long as, as well as other musical guests and stuff, there's stuff that hasn't been announced yet for both of these. I'm looking forward to it. Then um, the month before that, and I think like March, there's a uh, um, Starfest and the Denver Independent Artists and Convention something or other. Dink is what they're calling it, and it's from the people who did uh, Denver Comic Con, and it's going to be quite good, I think, quite good. So uh, let's get down to that interview that we had with Carrie Kieran in from Nondesk on 2016. So uh, cue the music. Welcome back to Radio DMG. I'm your host, Will Wesley, the Mile High Mouth, and I'm over here at Nondesk on 2015 with Carrie Kieran. 
And just in case our studio audience isn't familiar with what you do and who you are, who are you and what do you do? Uh, I'm Carrie Karanen. I'm a voice actor who started out in New York and now I'm in L.A. My most recent credits are Lady Satsuki in Kill la Kill, Mami Tomoe in Madoka Magica. I voiced Lux in League of Legends. Uh, my first job was Casca in Berserk and Mokuba in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've done a ton of stuff in between. So how did you get started in voice acting? Oh, well, I was doing a play at the time and found out about this guy casting a new show. And uh, they were like, here's his number if you want to audition. I was like, sure, great. So I went in and I auditioned. I met Michael Center Nicholas and he and I really hit it off. And he kind of explained to me like what anime was. And um, I auditioned for that and I ended up getting lucky and booking my very first job. And that was Berserk. And we recorded it uh, every couple of months over the next you know, year or so, and I really had a chance to learn and explore a lot about, you know, the genre and also the craft, and and then it was kind of just growing since. So you were in a theater production at the time. I was, yes. Actually with Mark DeRazon, who plays Guts, oh. both of us. I went and auditioned, then came back, and Mark hadn't called, and I basically bullied him into calling, and he, we ended up booking that role, the show together. <laughs> Excellent. So you have a bit of a theater background, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. So um, what part of the glove did you um, did you grow up in again? Michigan. Right? Oh, Michigan, yes. right? Yeah, uh, right outside, right? Yeah, right outside Detroit. We call it the mitten. Oh, the mitten. It's sorry. the mitten. The mitten. Um, because uh, and then there's the glove you'd see the fingers, about, right? Yeah. yeah. Then the, there's the UP. I mean, I don't yeah, really no remember that. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I grew up outside Detroit, Michigan, so a northwest suburb called Oak Park. Yeah. And. Um, you have um, several different degrees. Would you like to talk about those? Well, my degree is in um, linguistics and theater. So when I was studying, in addition to per uh, pursuing performance, I actually wasn't in the, the, the proper theater school. I just was able to kind of sneak into all the classes mm -hmm. that I wanted to, um, you know, through the professors and just like a relentlessness of spirit. Um, and, then, uh, and then I also studied linguistics. And I've always been fascinated with languages and how people communicate. So my um, sort of sub, uh, my sub um, category inside of that was um, teaching and learning method method mm. methodologies. Methodology. Yeah. So, um, and I actually just started taking uh, Italian classes because I was. It's been a while since I've studied a language, so and I missed it. So I, I just signed up for a language class recently. Wait. Well, yeah, once you start with a morpho, mor oh, dang it, morpho, morphological. I cannot pronounce that word. I don't even know what word you're trying to pronounce. <laughs> It's M O R P H O L O G I S T I C S. Oh, I stopped oh. paying attention after that. Oh, okay. yeah, it's like mm. <laughs> it, it's a it's a thing with linguistics. <laughs> so, how do you feel that linguistics helps your um, dra um, drama and? Uh, well, I think that I think that ultimately, you know, everything starts with an idea, and then that idea is translated into a script. Mm -hmm. And I think that how people talk, how people express themselves, word choices that they use, you know, definitely give us information about that person, about where they're coming from, about their kind of life view, you know. And um, so I think that, you know, ultimately, all acting and all talent is, is really script analysis, you know, because you pull out whatever you're pulling out from the script, and you're going to see things that other people aren't going to see, and that's kind of your individual kind of take on things, right? And... Um, and if you're lucky, your take is the one they choose. Uh, but yeah, I just I, I think that script analysis is really just the key, and the more that you can practice um, and understand like how people are communicating and how ideas are getting communicated, then the better off you're going to be being the stepping into the person who's trying to communicate those ideas. So um, you've uh, you've done voice acting and a little bit of um, of drama and such mm -hmm. and uh, theater. Um, are you looking into um, doing more writing and stuff too for anime series? Like writing? Oh, I don't, I don't, I, I write, but I don't write for, I don't um, adapt. That mm -hmm. is not, that adapt. is not the a skill set I have ventured into. Not yet? No, 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 no. Oh, it happens to everyone eventually. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of hap everything happening to people eventually, um, what do you think of Denver, Colorado here? Um, what do you think of uh, Nandescon? It's beautiful. I, yeah, I, um, I've never been to Denver, oh. um, so this is my first chance in Denver as well as the convention. And um, everyone always had such great things to say about it before I came here. And you know, within half a day, I could see why you know everyone really loves this convention so much. And it really is like a family feel and a family run. Um, and uh, I got to come a little bit earlier than normal because uh, of the altitude. Yeah. I, yeah, 
I usually get sick, so I wanted to give myself a chance to adapt. Um, but I, I ended up not getting sick at all. I, I, I translated very well. And um, but it was nice to be able to like, go on a tour and see some of Denver and, and get out a little bit before the convention started. And and then it's also just been. Um, you know, my schedule's been loose enough that I've been had a chance to spend a little bit more time with the fans. You know, like running into them or dropping in on other um, uh, other people's uh, panels and, things. Panels yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like and so, um, so yeah. So it's been the whole experience has been really lovely, and it's interesting because of course it's Labor Day weekend, and I've been sort of thinking this, thinking about this as my vacation because. Uh, August and early September was like really busy and when I get back you know I have, it's, I'm going to be really busy for the next kind couple of weeks stuff. so I was like oh this is going to be I really needed this to be kind of a have a vacation feel to it for me and my own mental capacities and it really has it's really delivered on, on, on all ends and the weather's been beautiful and oh. I mean I really can't say enough but nice things have you checked out the uh, Taste of Colorado stuff yet? No, I didn't go over there at all. We did like a tour, and then I went to the National History Museum, and we did a little bit of sightseeing, and I walked up and down 16th Street, and um, I was able to hit the gym a couple times in the, in the other hotel and stuff, so I was, I was able to do those things, but I'm not really a, I'm not much of a foodie, so going to like food festivals is... A little like yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Things, I'm like so. I don't do food based events, but I like to do things that are more like have like a cultural or historical mm -hmm. significance. Like those there's, I find really interesting. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of cultural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, uh, if you haven't checked out like uh, even in Colorado Springs, there's that whole thing with like Nikola Tesla and all that stuff. Oh. Yeah, he um, had a laboratory down there. Oh, Spanish. fantastic! But yeah, there's a lot of history here in Colorado. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's I'm learning. Of, yeah, it's uh, it's fun. Yeah. Definitely coming back next year. Well, who knows? Who knows? I don't know if I'm going to be four months. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, um, you're all over. The, you can be all over the place. Might be out in uh, L.A. for something or New York for something. Yeah, well, I, yeah. You know, I've only recently started doing conventions mm -hmm. because I uh, used to perform a lot on the weekends and stuff. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how the schedule. But it's, the schedule has been more free this summer for me to do stuff. But we'll see once the, once the fall and winter start to swing in. But I've been enjoying it and enjoying the opportunity to meet fans and talk with them and you know talk about the shows and that um, I've been in that we're both that we both love and and that's been really rewarding. So I enjoy doing them. And there's like this just it's just a great atmosphere, you know. I've noticed mm -hmm. that kind of like an electric power to it, just an energy to it, right? Yeah, you know, it's so it's so interesting. I think the thing that's so amazing about anime is that like the fan the fan base really is a, like a community. You know, it's not just. A bunch of people who happen to be fans of a, of a similar thing like they really like you can see how they relate to each other and that it really is like a family it's a community and it's such a powerful and distinct um phenomenon you know the, phenomenon. the fandom right the <laughs> fandom inside of anime and um and it's great it's just and there's like so much enthusiasm for for the shows so it's it's nice to be able to talk with other people who who like the same things and are excited about the same things that you're excited about, but um, but really the like, the anime community really um, has just bonded in a way that's that's really unique. Yeah, and conventions seem to be like a well point for those where you get a lot of that energy there. These um, that community just builds people up and up and up. And then I've noticed something with conventions is that once the convention hall lights fall for the last day and everyone goes back to the daily grind of, that, of their normal life, like dealing with school or work or stress or, um, you know, or bullies or other types of things, um, they tend to lose that energy from the convention fairly quickly. Are there any tips or suggestions that you have for our audience on how to keep that, that NDK power, that energy, that convention energy, alive and well throughout those help people deal with that you know i think it's a very i think it's very common that when you have like a big a big like exciting mm -hmm. event you know these are and these are like highly stimulating events you know on like every level so it's really natural for the brain to kind of swing back in the opposite direction you know for and any kinds of events like this not just anime and um but i think that you know i i, I can't really speak to what you're saying it's not something that i've experienced um you know, and I, I, when I chat with, you know, fans on, on Twitter or Facebook, you know, they don't, they don't really kind of express that to me too much. Um, so I think that, but I think the way, the, the way to not feel alone in the world in general, I think is to connect and communicate with others. So um, I would say, you know, to just 
you know, rely on your friends and the more that you can just keep building community and like staying in touch and, and finding, you know, positive ways to influence each other. And it's one thing, you know, I always have a friend, a good friend of mine who's an actor and a, and a very talented writer in Los Angeles. And we have this code that like, we'll call up and be like, listen, I just need to bitch. I'm like, all right, cool. Or I just need to vent. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'll just listen to him like vent about whatever he has to vent about. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, cool. And then, and then he's like, but he like he knows what to ask for. He's like, all right, listen, I need, I just need, I just need some sympathy, or like I just need a pep talk. And so we literally just ask for the thing that we need. And sometimes, sometimes you need to just get something off your chest. But a lot of times, I think that what you have to be careful about is falling too much into commiserating about like, oh no, and this is and da da da. Because if you start to bond over that, then every time you meet, you need to rebond over that. And so you're kind of in a way you. Th- you can accidentally the, the difference between venting and commiserating it can it, it can feel good but if it if it keeps going on is like the way of, then it kind of like brings everything down you it's know like and an so echo chamber. yeah it gets lower yeah it but it's continues. still like that but it's still there and i think that these things like we just have to be careful you know in our in our daily lives now especially with all the social media mm-hmm. to be really careful about letting like low level negativity kind of like get in and start yeah. to like affect us and whatever yeah. so we just have to be a lot more just in tune with our own, like with our own kind of rhythms and, and just notice, oh, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel sad or I'm starting to feel, okay, well, what helps me when I do that? Okay, what helps me is reaching out to a friend or what helps me is like, I'm going to go, you know, what, whatever it is for yourself that helps you kind of like get centered or like connect to yourself again. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's just like the journey we're on in this life, you know, like how do we take care of ourselves inside of the madness that is the world? It's surviving. Right, exactly, exactly. So, um, but I think it's just really important to ask these questions because it's, it's such an individual thing what helps motivate us or inspire us. And once we're aware of that, to be able to like communicate and ask for it or find it or get it, you know? Excellent. So, um, before we get going, um, is there anything that you'd like to promote, like a, maybe a Twitter handle or something? Or oh yeah, I'm on. on I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty easy to find. It's my name. So I have a YouTube channel. I just launched a web series called "Reasons I Don't Like Myself and Other Stories of Erratic Behavior," and um, they're all really short little um, bits. And the title tells you everything you need to know. So you can click on it or not click on it at your own volition. Um, and then yeah, I'm on Twitter, and um, I have a Facebook fan group called Carrie Karen and Students of Hanoji Academy, oh. and that's really where I have a chance to interact with most of my fans and post stuff there so yeah excellent yeah well thank you for the interview thank you so much yeah my name is Philip Wesley the Mile High Mouth I'm here at Non Desk on 2015 with Carrie Karenin and good night and you are now caught up That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host. And um, yeah, that's it for right now, today. That is all you're getting today. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's a little bit short, but um, hey, new episode of Radio DMG. You take what you can get, right? We're like, um, what what we'd want you to do essentially is like transcribe the entirety of the program onto like a piece of paper or something, and then like... um, print it out, then like soak it in water, then burn it, then soak up the ashes in the water, and then just inject it straight into your veins like it's heroin. Y- yes, that's how you participate in this show. Um, you, you, you take us intravenously. Is it intravenously? Intravenously, yeah. Into your veins simultaneously. Or you can just listen to us through your ears. Um... I think that the ear method is actually probably the best way to consume this show. And um, if you like this show, um, you should go ahead and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on YouTube. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming out on YouTube. Um, we're going to start doing a series of horror game reviews. Horror, 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 horror game reviews. As well as uh, we're going to start doing audio only movie reviews at um, Area DMG. So that'll be a thing. That'll be a thing. Definitely. But until then, I guess I'm just sitting here trying to kill a little bit of time with you, or or not. Um, actually, let me talk a little bit about, well, Lord of Magna Made in Heaven. I'm actually working on a review of that. I beat it um, 
a while back and uh, liked the game, just playing through it again, you know, because there's multiple, quote, endings with the... Actually, there's multiple sequences that you can see with the, little, with the um, girls in the game, and um, those are amusing. Some of those are pretty funny. Some of them are just, you know, your fan service amusing. And uh, I kind of like it. It's a decent little game. Um, I'm going to do a long-form review of it at some point. Also, I was working on something for, I think, uh, November. Is it November? That's the one that's like the Narai no mo thingy, the one where you write a novel or something. I actually wrote down a couple ideas for those. And I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Kind of like the whole Skeksis thing. I'm actually, right now, if I had like a Fu Manchu type beard, I would be like stroking it and be all like, hmm, yes. This is a thing. Yes. And people will be like, okay, what what are you doing? Don't do not do that in public. That's gross. And I'll be like, oh, that's okay. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's the show for today. Not too, too much. Just a lot of rambling in between a fairly decent re- de- 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 decent interview. Um, I think it was pretty good. To be perfectly honest, I feel um, there is a question I always ask. It's the uh, energy question. It's kind of about bullying and stuff. It's about, you know, self-actualization. And sometimes an actor will just nail that question so hard and just bam. Like Carrie here with her talk about um, echo chambers and, and why those are bad. And I was just like, oh, man, this lady is just nailing this question on all points. Um, I was really pleased with it. I was just like, oh, I like this answer. This is, mmm, this is some delicious red meat when it comes to interviews. You see, because I really, um, if I'm going in here, I'm going to ask you about what you make, but I also want to know more about you. Because to me, art is important, but art anyone can experience. An artist is something that you can't experience just by looking at their art. You have to experience an artist by talking to an artist, finding out more about them, learning their opinions on things, learning about them. And while an appreciation of an artist may not translate to an appreciation of their art and vice versa, I I think it's important. They're separate, but they're equally as important. And I think that that question, I, I really liked that. That was a pretty good interview. Um, I want to give a shout out to the staff at Nondescon. Um, especially their press head, um, Otis, because, um, wow, uh, just nailed it this year. This year, it was just fantastic. Um, I feel the audio works for these. Those, the, everything was just, it worked out pretty well. Um, we didn't get an interview with J. Michael Tatum. We were supposed to, but then he was all like, he had to fly out somewhere and there were some issues with that. And that happens. Um, whenever I go into a convention, I always ask for a lot of interviews just in case stuff falls through because I prefer to be a little bit flexible, you know, and if you can't be flexible, then it's kind of an issue. I I feel that it's best for everyone to be flexible on that. There are people it's like, oh yeah, I would love to do an interview with you. Or, uh, if we can't do an interview with you, we'll do an interview with you at some other point in time, that type of stuff. It's just, you know, it's a thing. And um, I, I rather liked it. I like the new location. I love how um, there's all these new locations for things this year, um, or rather next year. It's, whew, it's interesting. Gotta love that. But uh, that's the end of the episode for today. I'm your host, Hope Wesley, the Mile High Mouth. You can follow me on Twitter at, at DMG Ice. You can follow us on Facebook. It's DMG Ice. Or you can go to streetpassaurora.com or just go to DMGice.com. And right under that pretty great picture from uh, um, the new Triforce Heroes thing are a bunch of little tabs. Um, let me explain how to use that site. Let's say you bring it up on your tablet, right? Now, depending on what type of tablet you've got, there's a little blue bar on the right-hand side. That's so that you can scroll you can push up or down on that blue bar and scroll through our content without activating anything by accident because one thing i hate is when i'm act i'm trying to get through a website and it's loading i just want to read something down below and i click by accident like i'm touching the site and i'm trying to scroll and i accidentally brush up against something i didn't want to click and it goes into Okay, a lot of websites don't work right on mobile, 
and it is disgusting. They are just bogged down with needless flash. They're bogged down with uh, needless CES stuff. Just terrible. Um, a lot of that, a lot of modern site design is awful for mobile devices. I, I, I'm all about compatibility when it comes to a site. So if my website looks like it is, it was made in like the eight, the nineties, uh, actually it looked different in the nineties. We were trying to be all neat looking and progressive and whatever with our design. We just didn't want frames. Our, our thing was, Oh God, no, no to frames, no to frames. Frames are bad. Frames are awful. Frames are hideous. And we stand by that because frames are bad, frames are awful, frames are hideous. Pop-ups and pop-unders are bad. Um, we do have some floating point stuff, but no. It, it's just, no, it just bogs down the design of the site. Now, under that, there's these little tabs with each of our social media. There's like the Reddit, the Vote, uh, the Elo, um, YouTube, Flickr, Pinterest, um, Facebook, Twitter, all these other things, right? And um, they're little tabs. You just move over to it, and then you tap the tab. And most of the times, those little those little ribbons, those tabs, open something up in a new window. Really easy to do, and we prefer to do it because, quite frankly, I, I think it's about convenience. I want you to be able to go to the you could go to the website on web crawler, and it would work exactly the same way that it does today. And I want that because, um, hello, uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future with the internet. If we end up in some messed up Ready Player One style internet, ugh, I want people to still be able to have a website that functions. Yeah, it's old, it looks old, but it's intended to because it's all about function over form, which is something Nintendo has believed in forever. And um, I'm glad that they've been, they've been around for over 100 years because they believe in function over form, which is good. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much me just ranting for a bit. So thank you for putting up with that. I'm your host, Philip Wesley, The Mile High Mouth. You're listening to Radio DMG, and you are now caught up. <laughs> So, um, basically the, 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 um, to be honest, uh, um, this, uh, precisely somewhat kind of, did you know, um, there are so many things like, um, you can, uh, put into the, um, thing to like extend like the amount of time that you're like talking and, um, that's a totally a filler thing, right? Totally. Anywho, anyways, to be honest, thankfully, um, one thing we're thinking of doing is called uh, Radio DMG After Dark. You see, um, I might get some people in on that, and we talk about stuff, and I will curse a bit in it, maybe. Maybe be a little bit more crude. I don't know, that might be a thing. Um... I might just say fuck quite a bit and it will be uncensored. So that that other project is Radio DMG After Dark. I, I'm not sure really what we're going to do with that yet, but I'd love to do it. Oh yeah, with all of you. All night, all day, every day, multiple times. Please consent. Morning, Maya.